So I got a question yesterday on YouTube from somebody named Purple Scooter 74 and I like the question so I thought I'd just answer it today in this video. Their question was, I hit my ball into a penalty area marked with red stakes, but when I go to drop my ball, I'd be dropping on the cart path. Am I supposed to drop it on the cart path? That's a great question, Purple Scooter, and let me start by giving you kudos for calling it a penalty area. That's right, they're no longer called hazards. That name was eliminated almost three years ago. So we are talking about penalty areas and not hazards today. So what Purple Scooter was saying was that he hit his ball into a red penalty area just like this one. He wants to take lateral relief, which is one of his three options for a red penalty area, which is taking the estimated spot where the ball last crossed the edge of the penalty area and two club lengths from there, no closer to the hole. The hole is in this direction, which is why our two club lengths are slanted in this fashion. Now I've already measured this. I've got our estimated spot where the ball last crossed the edge of the penalty area. And I've also measured two club lengths right here indicated by this ball marker. So you can see that our two club lengths gives us this relief area, which is right on the cart path. And the question is, are we allowed or are we supposed to drop the ball on the cart path? And it's a really great question because there are folks that think that you either can't drop it on the cart path or you're gonna get relief from the cart path anyways, so just skip it and go to that side over there and drop it. And that's an issue because if you think about it, our ball is lost in the penalty area, we are going to take relief. And the rules say that we are allowed to take relief for a penalty stroke, but we must play in the prescribed relief area. This is the right place for us to play our next shot. If we play from anywhere outside of it, we're playing from the wrong place. And that comes with the general penalty. So we can't just skip over the cart path yet. And all of this will make even more sense once we go through the motion of taking this relief. I've got my ball here and uh, I wanna make sure that I'm correctly dropping from knee height in the relief area. And I'm gonna proceed with doing that. All right, so not surprisingly, we get a bunch of bounces, but most importantly, this ball came to rest outside of this relief area. When that happens, we are required to drop the ball again, so that's what I'm gonna do. Only this time, I'm gonna pay attention to where this ball first strikes the ground, because if this ball comes to rest outside of the relief area for a second time, then I am required to place the ball where this ball first struck the ground on its second drop. So I'm gonna again drop it on the cart path and I've got our mark right there. The ball did in fact come out, come to rest outside of the relief area. So I'm now required to place my ball on this spot. So I'm gonna take my ball and I'm gonna place it on the spot so it comes to rest, bam. Okay, this ball is now in play and we have completed taking relief from the penalty area. Now we can move on to the next step, which is making a decision. Do we want to play this ball as it lies or do we want to take relief from the cart path? All right, so a little camera angle change there for you so we can see the relief from the cart path scenario now, but we've just taken relief from the penalty area. Our ball is in play and on the cart path and we want to take relief from the cart path. So under 16.1, we're going to find the nearest point of relief. And from that point, we had a one club length relief area. So the ball right there, I'm going to estimate by simulating taking my next shot as if this cart path wasn't here and no closer to the hole. I'm gonna put a T down right there. I don't have to mark the T when I'm actually taking relief, but it is a good idea. If my ball was right there, I would have no interference by the cart path. So this now becomes my nearest point of relief. From this point, I get a one club length relief area. So we're gonna use our longest club in our bag. That's not our putter. And for most of us, that's our driver. So again, I'm gonna sort of just measure out really quickly what that looks like for me. Again, you don't actually have to use, physically use your driver. You can estimate with your eight iron if you wanted to, for example. Uh, but you can now see the relief area that we have to drop our ball and taking relief from the car path. So I'm gonna pick up my original ball. I don't need to mark the spot there. Um, I can clean this ball and I can also substitute it for another ball if I wanted to. I'm just gonna keep this ball. I've got my relief area right here. I'm gonna find a pretty decent line for what I would like to hit out of. And I'm gonna correctly drop it from knee height so that it lands in and comes to rest in that relief area. It's no closer to the hole. 
this ball is now in play. And if we bring this around full circle, this is why it's so important that we take relief from each condition independently in that progressive manner. Because there's no way I could have found my nearest point of relief for the cart path if I didn't know where my ball was on the cart path. And I wouldn't know where my ball was on the cart path until I took relief from the penalty area and dropped it on the cart path. So there is a method to the madness to ensure that we're finding the most accurate spots throughout this progression. And that's why we have to do what we just did. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, do me a huge favor and hit that thumbs up and click subscribe. It really helps the channel out. If you have any questions, just drop a comment down below, but we'll see you in the next one.